Hello? Okay, great. So thank you very much, Gary. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, I am Matt Williams. I'm the CTO of what was known as Rockport Networks, but actually last week we rebranded as Serio because we're taking the technology we sort of proved out in the HPC space, the inter-process communication, the MPI space, and applying it to row-scale composability. So taking the exact same technology we've been leveraging in production for a couple of years and moving it towards, as Gary says, extreme scale composability. So first let's talk about why what we're doing is important, what the actual problem is. We good? Thanks. So um, the challenge is, well, before, you know, let's say a few years ago, CPUs dominated all the discussions on how we're gonna run HPC applications. What's happened, of course, is that there are new accelerators on market, and it's now become a heterogeneity problem where you don't just want CPUs, you want GPUs, you want different accelerators, you want different kinds of devices to run your workload. Some workloads will require a mix, some will be focused on one. But the challenge is that those accelerators have to live somewhere. And typically what's happened is they're placed within servers, but our custom servers are different from the servers you'd normally deploy. And they have different needs, different requirements, uh, different kinds of firmware, different kinds of BIOSes, and they have a very high power consumption. But the challenge is that you can only put a fixed number of accelerators in the server. So typically it's four. There are, of course, eight GPU chassis as well. But once you put those devices in the server, they kind of get trapped within that server. So if you have workloads that require a ratio of two GPUs per CPU, well, it's challenging because you actually have four. So you end up with is a lot of stranded resources, a lot of stranded capacity, where you have CPUs that are idle, or you have GPUs that are idle, or you have suboptimum number of accelerators for your job. It's a, it's, a, it's a very inefficient way of running things. And then if there's a new accelerator that comes to market, and you know, I've talked to a few people as, as, as uh, this show, you know, there's a couple of hundred accelerators that will be in market in the next couple of years, focused on solving different kinds of problems very efficiently. It's very hard to adopt those new technologies because you're not going to build a new cluster around them. What you'd really like to do is be able to add those to the existing clusters you own. But that's very challenging because they have, may, may have different requirements, and so it's hard to adopt those new technologies. So what we're proposing and what we're actually developing and delivering to market in the next couple of months is an open system for disaggregation. So the idea is that the GPUs, other high power devices, even NVMe drives, are not placed within the server. Instead, you use existing servers, you know, the servers that you'd normally want to deploy, you put those in the top with what we call our fabric node, those are the cards within the servers. And then at the bottom, what we have are PCI Express expansion chassis. These are chassis designed with a power and cooling for these high power devices, but they do not have a processor. It's just a PCI bus within a chassis. We place one of our fabric nodes, or more, more than one fabric node, within that chassis. And then those cards are connected together through what we call a shuffle, which is a passive optical interconnect. And what you get is a very rich mesh of connectivity between all of those fabric nodes. So it's the same underlay technology we've been proving out in HPC. And then to the system, what you have is a very large pool of servers. that can be hundreds of those servers. A very large pool of devices. And if your job requires a certain number of GPUs, or TPUs, FPGAs, whatever the device is, you can, at job runtime, request that those devices be composed into those servers. So you can have a certain number of GPUs in one job, other uh, devices being pulled into different servers for different kinds of jobs. So what you end up with is a very optimum ratio of the right kind of accelerator for the right kind of CPU at runtime to get optimum performance out of your workload. <clears throat> and of course, if there's new kinds of accelerators or technologies that want to adopt, you don't have to build out a new cluster. You just add those devices into the existing device chassis or add additional device chassis into the pool. So you end up with the ability to have any devices uh, within any of those servers, again, done at job runtime. Now, we're not the first uh, company to look at composability and disaggregation. The challenge is that in the past, people have been trying to use native PCI Express technologies to solve a problem. Of course, native PCI Express is designed as a local interconnect. It's designed to live within a server or very short distances. 
and it really doesn't have the technologies of a basis to form a network, which is what you need when you want to get to a large enough scale to make composability have a strong business case, the flexibility that you really need. So what we've done is we've, dis we've decoupled what is on the end systems from how you get the, to that data transported across the system. So we have PCI Express domains within the server. We have PCI Express domains within the chassis. But between those, we don't actually use PCI Express. We, we did this very intentionally. We did it when we were doing Ethernet-based transport for HPC. The idea is that by decoupling what the host and the endpoints want to see in terms of standard protocols, from how you move that data, you're no longer restricted by what those protocols will allow you to do. Instead, you can do things like adaptive multipathing, ultra-high priority, deadlock-free routing, things that those native protocols cannot handle. And so what we have to have is a series of services, Ethernet services, PCI Express services, that would then adapt in that sort of middle layer into what we call flits. So small pieces of data, which we then move around the network through a distributed switching system through those shuffles. So what we end up with is very large scale pools, any to any connectivity, of any of the sort of native limitations of PCI Express. And one of the big challenges of PCI Express is when you try to build a fabric out of it, you know, you can end up with a very long hierarchy of PCI Express switches exposed to a host, which means that a lot of standard hosts can't actually support large-scale PCI Express fabrics. You have to have custom BIOSes on a subset of servers within your fleet. So what we do instead is, in our architecture, we actually instantiate an emulated PCI Express switch. So if there are no PCI Express switches in our architecture, but to the host where we plug in our card, it looks like a native PCI Express switch. We react as if we were a PCI Express switch. And that means that we can customize the, the size of resources being reserved, the size of a switch, to match the BIOS capabilities of that device. And as an example, you know, we have a standard OEM tower server, and we can instantiate 32 devices in that. Regular BIOS, no customizations, it just works. And we, do, we, we set up this PCI switch in a special way with what we call placeholder devices. So when the server boots up, it sees these placeholder devices through our software emulated switch. It reserves what are called BDFs in a PCI hierarchy. It reserves memory spaces for future devices. And the job runtime, in this case, if we wanted two GPUs composed inside the server, we do PCI Express hot plug events to remove a placeholder, replace it with what we call a pseudo device, which allows a server to then say, hey, I have a specific GPU that's just been inserted into my system, and I'm going to load the correct device, and I'm going to start my job. And so because we've had that placeholder, this is a non-disruptive event. The server just sees the new device. You don't need to reboot. The server just gets up and running. And when the job is completed, you just do the reverse. You decompose the device, making it available for other jobs within the cluster. So one of the advantages of our approach is that your performance pedala can actually be much higher than you see within a specialized server or an OEM server. So for the same capital budget, you can afford more GPUs because you have the right ratio of the right kind of servers to those GPUs, and you can even afford more GPUs with the same capital budget. So there's advantages on both sides. And the efficiency of the GPUs, of course, is much higher because you're no longer stranding those resources within bespoke servers instead are available for any job at any time across the entire cluster. So if you want to learn more about Serio and our open systems platform, you know, send me an email. Uh, happy to uh, chat about it. Thank you. Any questions? So I, I have one. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So I, I'll repeat the question. I think you are saying is, does that adaptation layer going from PCI Express into our flits cause any increase in latency? And it's really measured in tens of nanoseconds. And you know, there was a study put out in SC22 studying HPC applications and the effect of disaggregation, you know, moving the GPU away from the CPU. And a typical performance impact is less than 1%. 
So from a sort of GPU to GPU uh, comparison, there really is no performance impact. And because in this system you can have a right number of GPUs composed, there are actually possibilities or opportunities to actually have faster workload completion time because you can apply more GPUs to your problem instead of being restricted to the number of GPUs you would have or, uh, otherwise had within that server. Oh, yeah, and, and again, that's in tens of nanoseconds, so it really has no impact on application performance. So that's the Sorry? That's the test yeah, that is the tested result of our data path in the system, yes. So the idea is, um, you know, we have a PCI Express domain locally, and all the things that are highly latency sensitive in PCI Express, the buff low control loops, the buffer credits, all those things are done locally, so very small, short loops. If any actual transport across the system, we take advantage of the buffers built into GPU-based HPC applications to make sure the GPU kernels are always active because they're being fed early. And so there's actually quite a bit of buffer available in those applications to transport the data across a longer distance you'd normally expect to see internally. Real quick, when the when the GPU, when the job is communicating with multiple GPUs and there's uh, GPU to GPU communication, is that going back through the host? And how does that handle that with, for instance, if there's NICs and uh, you know high performance NICs, et cetera, that you want to use GPU direct for? Sure. So we'll we'll take this sort of purple composition in the middle, and we we can compose up to 32 devices. Just the slide gets a little busy. So there are devices in two different chassis being composed into the same server. So they appear within the server's PCI Express hierarchy. So any communication that goes on between those devices in the same chassis obviously will stay within the chassis. There's a local PCI Express switch chip. Uh, any communication going between devices in different chassis will always take the shortest paths through the network. And I say paths because we naturally multipath through across that network. It doesn't have to go back up to the server through the root complex. So east-west traffic is always optimized. We're actually working with several organizations and groups on optimizing the middleware to take advantage of these direct connect topologies, these path-rich environments. And we've seen some pretty strong early results showing about a two to two and a half gain in collective performance just by taking advantage of technologies like us. Can you, can you extend this to NVMe? So NVMe peering and stuff like that? Absolutely. The, the system, although we talk about GPUs because it's obviously a topic of interest at this forum, <laughs> uh, we are agnostic to what the device is. We mirror what's called the PCI config space from the physical device up into that pseudo device, but we really don't care what that device is. So you know, we have customers that are interested in GPU composability and other accelerators and having that heterogeneity, that the sort of mix of things that they want to take advantage of. We have other customers that just want to do NVMe composability. You know, the ability to move NVMe drive, NVMe drives logically within their cluster, within their large cloud environment, versus having to actually physically go to the racks and make hardware repairs. Effectively, we're doing software-based repairs of failed devices. And then, of course, we have customers that have a mix of requirements. And yeah, any peer-to-peer -peer traffic between any PCI Express devices will always optimize the path either within a chassis or across the fabric. Any other questions? Let's thank our speaker. Thank you.